First of all, we need to inspect and prepare the trailer. In many cases, it is necessary to detrim certain components like lights, electrical receptacles, and other protruding objects that can complicate the install. However, some components like awnings on this trailer aren't feasibly removed. So you will need to prepare a plan on how you will work around these areas prior to install. We are priming the edges of the trailer. This will promote adhesion in areas that are susceptible to lifting. Apply a liberal amount of this solution to guarantee coverage, but not so much that it's dripping wet. Wait until it's tacky, about 10 minutes. Before we move on, let's take a look back at what Frank had mentioned earlier about some of the areas that were lifting on his application. Now these look like bubbles, but actually this is a concave area where the media has pulled away from the surface. To help prevent this situation from occurring, we would use a primer here, of course prior to install, and again primer will help promote better adhesion. Note, inspecting the vehicle for primering of similar convex areas like this is recommended by most material manufacturers. To be absolutely sure, check with your vinyl supply company to determine the manufacturer's recommendations concerning the use of primer. Next, we check the surface of the trailer with a digital IR gun, making sure the surface is at the ideal install temperature. That's 65 to 75 degrees, give or take a couple. Okay, as usual, we'll check our install map and make sure we have the proper panel. On a full wrap like this, we'll always start at the back of the trailer and work forward. This will ensure that the leading edge of the overlap between panels is not in direct contact with the pressure of the wind and rain that will cause the lifting of those edges. Next, we pin the panel in place, then level and straighten. Here Rich is checking both the horizontal and vertical edges and pins in place. Hey, this panel will predicate how the entire side will lay out, so you need to make sure it's dead on. Now he'll tape horizontally anywhere from 18 to 36 inches down the panel. This will keep the panel positioned while he removes the backing in preparation for the install. All right, here we go. Since the panel is secured in position by the lower tape, he will remove the pinning tape at the top and start peeling the backing paper and fold behind the graphic. Rich will now place the material back into position, but notice that he has pulled the graphic taut to just under the awning's attachment point and precisely relief cut the graphic around that area. This enables him to get the graphic to lay flat and start conforming around that protrusion. As he works the panel into position, he again relief cuts a little bit at a time until he reaches his final position for application. Rich checks his alignment and then starts to squeegee the material down, starting in the middle of this area and works the squeegee horizontally and vertically to finish the top portion of the panel. Always checking and repositioning to keep the graphics on the right track. Rich will carefully cut the excess material from the trailer. Remember, always re-squeegee the area to make sure it's down before you move on. Let's take a look at another tool we use when preparing the rivets. This is a pinwheel. This provides small penetrations in the graphic to allow air to release when using a rivet brush. Notice how the installer moves the tool over each rivet only. The torpedo tool is a quick, easy way to get these rivets handled, and they actually have different sizes available for different size rivets. A little practice with this tool and you'll be a pro. There's always a need for a rivet brush, so have one of these handy at all times. You'll use this on rivets and other areas that the squeegee won't work. Notice after the pinwheel has made the penetrations, the installer will apply a small burst of heat, making the area more pliable. Now some manufacturers rule on temperature is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. 
do not exceed that temperature. If you are unsure, please see the manufacturer's recommendations. The installer works the brush with a medium pressure and rotates the brush in a circular motion, pushing all the air from behind the rivet. Now we're ready to move to the lower portion of the panel. Once close to the backing, remove the horizontal tape and reach under the graphics, pulling the backing down to reveal another 18 to 36 inches of material and repeat this step through to the bottom of the panel. Note, always keep an eye on alignment all the way through the application. Reposition if necessary and keep the panel taut throughout the entire process. On the second panel, the key element will be achieving registration. That is the matching of your next panel to the last one. Now have your blue tape handy to pin the next graphic in place. Reposition to get the match. Once you have registration, apply the tape to the edges up and down both sides to hold the graphics in its desired location. Note, any movement here can become a problem for maintaining registration. Now repeat the steps that you did on the first panel install. You know, the horizontal tape, 18 to 36 inches, fold the backing under, and or cut the backing away, whichever is easiest for you. Now remember, you'll need to check that you're maintaining registration and that the overlap is the same from top to bottom all the way down the panel. Upon finishing the panel or panels, and after you've completed your rivets, relief cut the panels, heated the edges, cut the graphic free from all the areas where you removed hardware, like the lights and receptacles. Finally, you'll give the entire trailer a good once over, completely reviewing the entire surface. There it is, the completed side of the trailer. Very interesting. Well, let's say I just got my wrap, whether it's a trailer or a sports car or whatever, how do I take care of it? Well, it's a heck of a lot easier than taking care of paint. Well, we're gonna give you a few tips here on how to take care of your wrap and keep it looking its best. Wash the vehicle regularly, but don't use harsh chemicals or abrasives. Be careful about getting water under the edges of the vinyl and be cautious about using too high a pressure. And finally, using products such as glazing compounds or products designed to enhance the appearance of the vinyl. Hey Troy, thanks a lot to you and to your team for the wraps and the wrap lessons. Anytime, Joe, thank you. We hope you learned a lot from this video and that it helps your business become a successful part of this growing vehicle wrap industry.